We have three cool Apple intelligence features you probably don't know exist. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. So today I have a cool video. This is gonna be three different Apple intelligence features, kind of features that work with ChatGPT that you probably don't know exist or you probably don't know you can actually do. I'm going to show you three of them. Now, I think these are pretty cool because a lot of people use, you know, the, the you know, emoji features and things like that, but they don't know that you can kind of stack things and do things that are a little bit off the beaten path. And I'm going to show you what that means in a second. So I can take maps and I can ask it questions. I can have it create lists for me. I can have it do a whole bunch of stuff. You're probably not, you know, you, you probably would have no idea unless you actually see somebody do it. And I learned this, you know, watching other people do it. So I wanted to kind of pass that information on to you. So without further ado, let's get into this video. Here's three different cool features that you can do but first let me just make sure you have it set up you know the, the, the correct features that you need and I'm going to go through that first but then I'm going to show you all three of those cool you know cool examples of what Apple intelligence can do and I'm a proponent like before I said how bad it was and it is not the best let's just put it that way but at least I found a couple of things you can do kind of cool with it and I'm going to show you all right, just to make sure you have everything set up correctly first, take a look at my screen. Here's the system settings. I'm in system settings. You wanna to go to Apple Intelligence right here, Apple Intelligence and Siri. And you wanna make sure up here, Apple Intelligence has been enabled and Siri right here has been enabled. Um, this is actually gonna put this little icon up here in the upper menu bar up here. Now you also wanna make sure you're on the newest version of Sequoia. So update to the newest version of Mac OS. It's gotta be the newest version of Sequoia or later. Just make sure you update your OS. And then you can go in here and you can enable these two things. And then ChatGPT down here, if you click on this, um, you wanna make sure that it's enabled, use ChatGPT here. And then you can go ahead and you can you know add your own account and stuff in here if you want to. But it should give you some free kind of queries if you don't actually have an account every day. I think there's like 25 of them, but let's get into this. I just want to make sure you have it set up correctly, but you should have the little Siri icon up here in the right-hand corner that looks kind of like an Apple intelligence Siri. Here we go with cool thing number one. Let's go ahead and share my screen here. So let's just assume we're going to be taking a trip to Colorado. Here's Breckenridge, Colorado. You can see this map. I'm just in Apple Maps, completely normal Apple Maps, nothing special going on here. But what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to go up to the icon in my menu bar way up here, not in the maps, but way up here in my menu bar, the one we just talked about, Siri, and I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to go ahead and type in something like this. I'm going to say, what is the, let's just try this, population of the town visible on my screen all right just like that we're going to type that in and then we're going to click enter here now watch what happens it's going to say send this screenshot to chat gpt i'm going to say send it over to them remember we had all that stuff turned on let's just see what happens here is it going to give us a good answer or not it did actually it says the town visible on your screen is breckenridge colorado as of 2020 census breckenridge had approximately 4500 residents and so it picked this up from this whole map here it picked up the town it obviously looked at this and it actually gave me a good answer so next let's just try this next one next we're going to try this we're going to say are there campsites around this town and we're going to see what this comes back with so let me just click enter here and it's going to think about it, it says working with chat GDP. So let's, let's just see if it comes back with a viable answer here. And look at this. It says, yes, there are several campsites near Breckenridge, Colorado. Options include the Tiger Run RV Resort. You know, it goes through this whole thing, you know, heated pool, hot tubs. It gives you a lot of information. So now we're actually building on the first query, and we're just asking it more information about this. Let's just keep kind of drilling down here. Can you provide, uh, let's just say, can you provide the websites of these campsites and we'll try this next and you can see in here it says right here here are the websites for the mentioned campsites near Colorado Breckenridge Colorado Tiger Run RV Resort and look at you actually gives you well let me just go ahead and let me just see if you can click on it I actually clicked on it and it is a link it didn't it doesn't show up but when I clicked on it there's the link there I can go ahead and click on this one here and it's going to give me the link of this one as well Let's just see that, and then I'm going to click on this one right here. So you, you see that they're all going to be, you know, obviously, sometimes it, it, it just says for, page not found. So that one didn't work that well, but the other one did, obviously, you can see here. So sometimes it's going to work, sometimes it's not. Now, the key here is when you're asking all these questions, you really need to, you know, depending on who you ask them, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. This is the key. So you got to kind of learn how to ask the right way. Like, you got to say, like, what's, you know, what name something that's visible on my, on my screen or on my desktop, and then send it over to them. And then you got to ask the questions pretty quickly after that um, about the town that it has in memory. If you kind of start doing other things, it's not going to remember it, and then it's going to ask you maybe to resend it. So just remember that. So I thought that was kind of a cool example of what you can do with something like this, and you probably did know it was available. Here's cool tip number two you can do actually. Now stay with me for a second. 
what I have here is I actually have, this is gonna just be notes. So I have notes open on my Mac right now. And I have a list here. It says things I need to build, my own computer, motherboard, CPU, RAM, computer case, graphics. But I need some help here. I don't know what else I need to build that computer. And I can use ChatGPT and Apple Intelligence on this to help me out. So let me just show you what I do here. So all I'm gonna do is I actually wanna just go ahead and select the little area here that I'm talking about. So you're gonna go ahead and do that. Now, this time it's a little bit different. See this little icon right here? This is gonna be the Apple Intelligence or show writing tools, I guess. It, it came about with the Apple Intelligence. I'm gonna click on this little icon right there. See that? Then over here, I'm gonna go down to Compose right there. All right, and it's gonna open up this little box here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and type in this and we'll see what happens here. I'm gonna type in, can you help me help me complete this list right here. See that? And I'm gonna click enter, and we're gonna see what happens. It's gonna think about it for a second, and take a look. Let's go back over here now. It actually took the information on my screen, and it completed the list for me. It added a whole bunch of stuff. Motherboard, CPU, RAM, computer case, graphics card, power supply. All this kind of stuff came up, and it pasted it right in there. Now, I can revert back. If I need to, I can go up to basically edit, undo, and I can go back to the original, but, I like what it gave me here and I can go ahead and save this. And you can do things like this, like a packing list. If I just, you know, type in something different for a packing list, let's see if that works as well. All right, so this next list I have in here, it says things I need to pack on vacation. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I have a very, very minimal list here, passport, pants, sunglasses, computer, and shirts. Obviously I didn't get too far there, but I'm gonna highlight that again and I'm gonna go up to this little icon right here. I'm gonna click on it. Again, I'm gonna go down to compose right there and then it's gonna come up with this box and I'm gonna say, can you help me complete this list right there? See that? Now watch what happens. I'm gonna click enter. It's gonna think about it for a couple seconds and look at that. Let's go back over here. Certainly, here's a more comprehensive list. Passport, pants, sunglasses, computer, shirts, travel, medications, toiletries, swimwear, camera. You get the whole idea here. It's all in there, done really quickly using Apple Intelligence. All right, so tip number three here, I think this is another cool one for Apple Intelligence to tackle. So here we are in the Photos app right here. And I think you're gonna know about this, but it's just kind of how you use this, all right? So we're gonna open up an image here, any image in Photos, and now watch what happens. So this is the, my photo right here, and uh, we're gonna go up here, something new is here. So once we have Apple Intelligence enabled, we're gonna click on Edit right over here, see that little button? Now once we're in Edit, one new kind of button up here is gonna be this Clean Up button. You can see it right there. So I'm gonna click on that. What happens basically, you know, you'll notice that over here on the right hand side, it may have to load this in first. So you'll see a little bar there if it's actually, if that's actually going to be happening. It takes like about a minute. Mine's already loaded in, so I don't need to have that. So up here you can see clean up. See this over here on the right hand side? I'm going to go ahead and slide this bar. Now when I slide this bar back and forth, see that little circle how it gets bigger and smaller? That's going to be the size of your cleanup tool. So you want to kind of just pick a size that you want to use here. I'm going to use a circle like that. You can see it there. Then I'm going to take my cursor and I want to just take off this whole, you know, obviously the, the monument here, I'm gonna take this monument out of my picture. So with that with that shape and that size, actually let me make that a little bit bigger right there. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna draw right down the middle of this, right over this thing. And I'm gonna draw on that just like that and maybe try to get all of it in here. Let's just go like this, just to make sure I have everything in there. And then I'm gonna let go and let's just look what happens here. Just gonna think about it for a second and look at that, it took out everything there. See that? Now it's no longer there. That's really cool. Now these other things down here is flashing. What are these things flashing? Well, things that are flashing, it kind of recognizes that it can take out for you. So instead of using the tool over here to clean up, I can go down here and just click on these things. Just click on them once and watch what happens. Since they're flashing, they're gonna think about it and it's gonna remove them. See that and remove that person. Now, all right, one tip here now. Let's say you have something way over here. See this? And it's just really small in your picture, but you wanna get a good, you know, you wanna make sure that you get a good representation of cleaning that out, you know, with the little tool up here. What I recommend doing is you can zoom in on a picture actually. Zoom in a couple times. And let's just say like this over here, for example. I'm zoomed into this picture now, but I wanna remove this little part. And that's what I recommend doing. Then you pick the right size of the tool over here, obviously, depending on what you want. You go into the picture. And now that we're zoomed in, we can get a way better idea of what this is over here to kind of, and we'll just mark that out like that. I'm going to let go of that and you're going to see it thinks about it and then it just removes it. Now I didn't get all of it this time. So what I can do is I can go in here and I can go ahead and just scratch a little bit more out and try a second time and it's going to go ahead and remove that. There it is. So it's gone. So you can see that now. Then I can go ahead and just zoom back out of the picture. When I zoom in now, it's going to do a better job of trying to do it, you know, when I'm zoomed in than trying to do it from way back here. Because from way back here, there's not as much resolution. When you're closer, it's actually more resolution for the system to work with and you can kind of scratch things out a little bit easier. So that's one thing I recommend. 
So how do I actually use this tool? Well, you can use this tool. Let's say you wanna frame some pictures you took from Europe. Here's like a picture right here. And what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and bring it up in photos again, your picture, click on edit, and then you wanna go over to clean up again like I had showed you right here. Now yours may have to load in over here. Mine's already loaded in. So what I wanna do is I wanna get rid of this graffiti here because I wanna hang this picture in my house, maybe black and white, but I don't want this stuff on here. So all I have to do is first of all, like I would mentioned, I'll zoom in a little bit so I can get closer to this graffiti. Then I'm gonna go over here and pick a good size of my brush here about there. And then I'm just gonna start now with something like this. You wanna just start and do a little bit at a time. Now watch this, I'm gonna go over that little part there and it's gonna go ahead and remove it, look at that. So I wanna get rid of that little dot right there, so I go like that, and it's gonna remove that little dot. So the key here is doing these other ones really kind of piece by piece. If you do too much at once, it gets confused, especially when there's a whole bunch of text in here, you'll end up seeing some confusion. But when you actually do a little bit at a time like this, a lot of times it works a lot better when you kind of get rid of all this text. So it missed a little piece there, I'm just gonna get rid of that piece. So you can go ahead and do this. Now, you can try doing a whole bunch at once, and let me just show you what happens. A lot of times if you do a whole bunch at once like this, Sometimes it'll make a mistake. Let's just see if it does here. Yeah, kind of, you know, it obviously put these pieces back and then you just gotta go over it again. So I like to go like slow. You can zoom in really closely and then zoom back out and you're gonna have a clean panel there ultimately when you're done and the picture will look good. So that's kind of some of the recommendations I have for using this tool. Okay, so we're gonna wrap up the video. I hope this helps everybody out there. I think it's a good, you know, I think these are three good tips you can use. Again, you gotta kind of fool around with them. Now keep in mind that again, Siri, when you go out to um, ChatGPT, if you don't have an account with them, you have like a certain amount of requests you can do per day and then it stops working. I think it's like 25. So you can't continue to use this unless you have an account with them. But if you want simple things here and there, I think it works pretty good. And I think these are things a lot of people don't even know exist. Now again, Apple, Apple intelligence to me is not nearly perfect at all. There's a lot of problems with it. But sometimes you get things like this that work really well. And I like using them and I think you guys will too. So I'll talk to you guys in the next one. And uh, I make videos every couple days. Subscribe if you can. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.